how do, how do you screen clients so how do you make sure that it's a good match for you with whom you want to work yeah so I have, worlds? Um, I, I have like intense preparation conversations with them where I check in like okay well, what is your intention what's what's your background just getting to know them where and see where they're at and what they what question they come with what what challenge they come with and what they like try to um, where they try to go and also what what their expectations are in terms of you know how psychedelics might support them with that I, and I always tell people it's not the magic pill that will like solve all your problems with one cup on one ceremony it's, it's kind of a gateway that can give you deeper insights but the actual work starts afterwards so if you're not willing to do the work or willing or and are committed to doing that um don't expect that mirac miraculously from one day to the next like everything um has solved itself mm -hmm. so yeah and once you have like deeper honest conversations with people you kind of get a feel for where they're at also what um you know what's what's their mental health history and uh, of course with certain like um things in your mental health history it's not a good idea to do it so i also um speak with people openly about it so they are aware of risks and then they can make an informed decision mm -hmm. um sometimes also people found me for kind of more emergency integration sessions that had done ceremonies in different contexts and had a really bad experience and then they they're trying to cope with it and uh can't and then they somehow find me or someone recommends me and when when i speak with them and hear like how they went in and like like wow it's no wonder that this happened because there were so many red flags so mm. for me the like intentional preparation is is a crucial point and also really screening to make sure that it's super safe mm. and that people are really aware of what they're like going into yeah mm. could you Tell us a bit more about what some of those red flags might be for you. It's, it seems to be a, a conversational and uh, probably also, I mean, you're quite an intuitive person. So when you say deep conversations to prepare, I'm sure you pick up a lot. Uh, I wonder now when you reflect on it, is there some sort of mental checklist? Are there questions you would always ask at some point or another? And what, what might be some of those red flags that would help a coach make those decisions? Um, you mean when vetting someone? Uh, vetting um, is a terrible word, I think, but like, like, you know, when having that conversation to figure yeah, out is that a good it, match? If it, yeah, makes makes sense. Um, so what I'm when I'm speaking with people, what I'm trying to tune in is like where they're at in terms of like self reflection and coping mechanisms. So if if you have someone in front of you who like just blames the entire outside world and then doesn't really take responsibility for what's going on for them. I already know it's, you know, it's someone in a victim mindset is really difficult to uh, like bring to a point of really going into those deeper reflections and like the moments where you honestly have to admit something to you in the face of like plant medicine. Um, so I'm kind of checking that, but mostly it's, it's quite intuitive. I don't have like a certain catalog of questions in the conversation. I'll get a feel for, sometimes I also ask directly, um, to hear about like what people are struggling with to get an idea, well, what their coping mechanisms are, what expectations they also have, um, coming in or wanting to do it. Like what, um, what are they imagining? Um, then like what's like what brought them in the first place, the intention. Um, so it's a it's a variety of different things. Um, but I don't follow like one one strict catalog of questions. Mm -hmm. Could you give us an example of somebody you chose not to work with, perhaps? Yeah, I had a conversation with someone and um they wanted to uh, to come um, to a retreat, but it would have been the first time. And they were also in the conversation, I perceived them as like not really grounded and all over the place and unsure of things and this and that. Um, and then there were other things going on in their life where I felt, wow, that's like a lot. Um, and I intuitively felt it's um, it's not the, like, or at least not the right time. And I honestly said, you know what, like hearing what, what you shared with me, 
check in with yourself. I It might not be the right time yet. And maybe you also, maybe it's good to also start with something like smaller or different. You know, if you have someone who's never experienced any psychedelics before and then they immediately want to go for DMT instead of maybe starting with a microdose of mushrooms and getting a feeling for how how that lands in your body, how that feels, how your perception is different to to ease into it and um, become secure in yourself um, can be quite overwhelming to, you know, go from zero to um, yeah. to the max. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And Julia, before you take this forward, uh, I just want to kind of highlight that um, what we what we offer and the kind of journeys we take people on that that's quite a range right so uh, you can think of it as well co is this coaching versus therapy right somebody who's uh, not quite got the resources or tends to blame others you know you mentioned like tending to take this kind of victim stance um I'm sure there's plenty of people listening to this would say, oh yeah, that's exactly what they need to be confronted with by the medicine. Um, but that's a different journey. It might not be a coaching journey, right? So exactly. I think choosing our clients to make sure it's a good fit for how we work and where we take people and the kind of journeys that we are on might be different to a therapeutic journey or might be different to a, a coach who does extremely deep work, for example. Mm -hmm.